1974, President Gerald Ford authorized EMS Week to celebrate those who work in emergency medical services. All this week, fire and rescue departments are inviting members of their community to stop by and learn more about what they do and why. We're going to find out a little bit more about the week. First, though, we want to introduce you to one man who spends a lot of time honoring his EMTs because they changed the course of his life. Scott Nevers is in the business of saving lives. Call for help now. Just a few years ago, he started a company called Nevers Medical Group, which helps distribute automated external defibrillators, or AEDs. I emailed out like all the big school districts in Maine. I emailed out like summer camps and a lot of the stuff like that where to try to get some business. RSU 19, they bought a bunch of AEDs. His sales pitch covers how many people have been saved so by AEDs and how important they are to have on site. His pitch is his own story. Yes, I ran into the dugout and, and I guess I told the guys that you know I wasn't feeling so well and and then I, I don't know if I went behind the dugout and um, I just collapsed right there. Scott was 27 years old when he went into cardiac arrest during a softball game. This was July 19th, 2013. So we're coming up on five years. So it'll be my fifth birthday. <laughs> my fifth, second birthday. Call comes in, we're short staffed, we had people on other calls and I had one of my men um, on, uh, going to Biddeford Pool Station for a detail. And so we responded initially with four people. Captain John Pothier and paramedic Rob Mertz were two of the first on scene. Uh, we found them down in the parking lot surrounded by 20, 30 people. Playing. The Biddeford Fire and Rescue Department runs nearly 6,000 calls per year. But this one, five years ago, still resonates with this crew. This is my favorite medical call I've ever been on. Kind of embodied the whole reason we do this job. It was a aggressive teamwork related resuscitation where we stayed on scene and everything came time. into play and uh, we were able to use our knowledge and training and teamwork to bring back someone from the dead. This team of EMTs worked on Scott in the back of their ambulance for nearly half an hour. He received uh, over 20 shock therapies from us, which is quite a bit. Shocks from an AED, which saved Scott's life, along with consistent CPR. It sounds like no one was quitting on this. No. I'm pretty sure it was fairly quickly. I went into the department once I was able to go in and say hi. Um, you know, I gave them all a huge hug. I need to get out, man. I would get no time. And he's been coming back to the department ever since. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. A lot of times we don't even get to see the patient after, you know, some, some sort of an incident like this. Sometimes we do. In his case, um, he made an effort to come back and, and uh, meet all of us in a good way in a much better way, yeah. and, uh, and we've got to know him over the years. So. I've always kept in touch if I'm always in this area. I always try to swing by for lunch if I can to say hi. Um, you know, I always meet new firefighters, but the, the same five or six, you know, that I'm with, uh, you know, we're, we're all good friends and friends on Facebook. We, I've got their numbers where, you know, they, they want me to take them to golf. You know, one of them has a pig roast. I go hang out there. Um, I used to ref hockey with, um, with Kevin uh, when I was able to. You could say the Biddeford Fire and Rescue Department has become a second family for Scott. I and mean, I owe everything to him. For which brings us back to his chosen career path. You know, after talking with um, Physio Control, the, the AD company, I said, listen, I want to work for you, and if I can't work for you, I'm going to start a business selling your products. There isn't much of a profit in it because Scott's main goal is to get an AED to hang anywhere he can. Golf courses are, are, are getting there. There's still a couple out there that don't have them that I've been trying to, to, to sell. Uh, Knowing what the technology and the people on scene did for him. Literally every minute, every second counts. That is one heck of a story. And Scott Nevers is just one example of why people celebrate emergency medical service members. But this week is a chance to get to know your department and EMTs a little better. Yeah, Rick Petrie is the director of Atlantic Partners EMS, which is a resource and education agency for EMS providers in Maine. And he joins us to talk a little bit more about this week. Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Let's start with this. When someone calls 911, they sort of have this assumption of who's going to respond, that someone's always on standby. But that kind of varies depending on which town you're in in Maine. So who are these emergency responders? 
responders. It, it really does. It, um, everybody considers, the public considers 911 to be the safety blanket. When you're in trouble, you call 911 and, and people show up. And, um, and, but it depends, and it depends on where you are. If you're in Portland and Lewiston and Bangor, the big cities, you have crews um, that are paid to be there 24 hours a day. Um, but we're a really big state, very geographically diverse. And, um, and you have many people. We have 6,000 licensed people in the state of Maine. Um, responding to just under 300,000 calls a year, according to Maine EMS, and um, and but they they're in all walks of life. They're your they're your florists, they're your shop owners, they're your your uh, stay-at-home moms and dads. They're um, they're and and they live in your community. They're your tow truck drivers, and and uh, they live in your communities, and they and they have one side goal, one important goal, and that is is to. Uh, to be there when somebody calls 911 and they need help. You're a paramedic yourself. What does this week mean to you? It means a lot to me. Um, it, it really does. I mean, we, it's been out there for, uh, this is the 44th year for EMS Week, um, but it's really important because it's an opportunity for us to reach out to the public when we're not responding to their worst time in their life. Um, and we, we want to get to them. We want to. We want them to come by our stations. We want them to meet us. They, we want them to talk to us. Um, we want to, and we want to reach out. We're, we have a lot more outreach going on now. With um, we're in the communities teaching CPR and how to control bleeding and and what to do in case of an emergency. And there's a lot to your local EMS providers. And we're trying to get this take this opportunity to get people to learn about who's in their community and who's reaching out, you know, and, and who's coming to help them. Are there big misconceptions about those emergency responders that you think there are out there? It is hard. Um, people watch a lot of TV. Um, everybody doesn't live. Um, and, um, and, uh, and, and I think it's hard. It's not, uh, it's not a particularly glamorous job. It's, um, it can be very difficult. Um, and we're not, everybody considers that, you know, this is the life-saving field. Um, but more often than not, we're providing comfort. Um, and that's huge uh, for people. And so we need to really get that message out that, that we're, we're out there, we're in your community, we're here to help. Rick Petrie, thank you so much for coming in and celebrating EMS Week with us. We appreciate the work you do. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rick. We'll be right back.